Hey guys, it's Daniel again. Wanted to talk to you about uh, insurance requirements across the board here when we're when we're looking at renting box trucks to run Amazon loads. Um, so check this out. We are I'll put this together real quick. So insurance requirements. You want to get a box truck. You're going to rent it to start, and you're going to run for Amazon Relay. Okay. FMCSA is only going to require you to have 750 uh, auto liability limits. Um, they don't really care about anything else. The rental company you go with is going to need a million in auto liability. So your insurance is going to be a million, even though FMCSA says all you have to have is 750. All right. Just ignore that they're They just have lower standards. Okay. Rental company wants a million. Amazon relay wants a million. And if you work with any other brokers, they're automatically going to want a million. Okay. The only time you'd actually go with something less is if you're not doing this with the, if you're not running for these guys, like you have a direct shipper, like a contract, and they just don't care. They're fine with 750. That's about the only time you'd have lower limits. All right. And so rental company wants a million. Amazon wants a million. Brokers want a million for your auto liability. Okay. That is FMCSA calls it your BIPD financial responsibility. All right. They don't just say auto liability and make it easy. But that's BIPD, bodily injury, property damage is auto liability. All right. And then let's see, the rental company is going to want uh, to be listed as an additional insured and lost payee on the auto liability and physical damage. And I put C requirements here for how much coverage you need. I'll show you in just a second. Um, but yeah, additional insured and uh, lost payee on all of these, uh, which, you know, like if you get progressive, it might cost 20 bucks or something. It, it might depend on your state to add them as additional uh, interest or sorry, additional insured is the additional interest. So there's that. Now, cargo, FMCSA doesn't care about the cargo. Uh, there might be a, like a section in FMCSA that like shows cargo. That's only for household goods movers and maybe like hazmats or something. But you're not going to worry about that because you're not a household goods mover. You are a motor carrier with common carrier status, hauling only general freight, Hopefully, when you do your authority application, I made a video for that, um, that that shows you exactly what you need to select to make this as easy and simple as possible. All right. Um, but yeah, you don't have to worry about cargo. The rental company doesn't care about cargo. Amazon Relay and any other brokers you, you get signed up with want you to have 100000 If If you get something special out there, you might see where they want more. No big deal. You can, you can add more. It's kind of easy to up your cargo as long as you don't need more than like 250,000 in coverage. It's pretty easy to get up to 250. If you need more than 250, like you see something out there, somebody's looking, asking if you can get above that until you're in business three years, it's, it's probably not worth it because the, um, cause you have to get an excess policy for the cargo. And every time I've ever looked into one, it's like $3,000 and, uh, you can't really do it like on a trip basis, like one time deal. Um, and it's, it's normally just not worth it. Like the load won't pay enough if you're going to do it all the time, maybe, but probably not. And then no one cares about physical damage except the rental company. Okay. Uh, you might see on Amazon relay actually here, I'll show it right here. So auto liability, not less than a million per occurrence, including trailer replacement coverage of 50,000. That doesn't apply to you if you got a box truck. You're not you're not moving their trailers. That's like trailer interchange or non-owned trailer coverage. That's for the semi semis. Okay, that does not apply here. So back over here. Uh, now for physical damage with the rental company, if you got progressive, this is easy. If you don't have progressive, I don't know of any other insurance companies in the states I write that would make this feasible. Like 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 where we could actually do this and not mess you up, uh, just because of the access to progressive like we can get in there and make changes very quickly and easily and billing is automatically updated everyone else is a long drawn out process for the most part or they just won't let you rent a truck you need to own one or have it like a, a real lease like a term lease um progressive progressive is cool about this uh but here let's look at penske so penske wants a million in auto liability they put 120 on this one for physical damage. Basically, that's just saying the most expensive truck you could get is 120. 
Now, when you actually go get the truck, you need to ask the guy, the rep there that's getting you the truck, how much is that truck valued at? And um, if he can get it on paper or email it, you forward that to your insurance agent and say, hey, I need to update my physical damage to this. When you go to start your policy, you don't even have a truck yet. You could start the policy with no physical damage or like a very low amount, 20, 30 grand physical damage. Um, I've seen Penske, Budget, Ryder, Enterprise. I've seen trucks down in like the 40s, but normally not less than that. So, I mean, if you want a good idea of what it might actually cost, put like 50, 60, 70 on there. Um, I normally don't see trucks over 100, but the most they you probably could get, maybe like a refrigerated box truck would be 120. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, they say they want to be additional insured on here. All this has to be listed out on your certificate of insurance, which your agent will put together. Uh, but so, yeah, 120 there. That's that's Penske. Here is Enterprise. Same stuff. They want to be additional insured. This is, like, what the certificate will actually look like. They don't actually care about this uh, general liability section up here. They care about the auto liability and your physical damage. Okay. And deductibles, they normally don't want to see over a thousand for deductibles. So if you are trying to save money on the insurance, you could start the policy with like $2,500 deductibles just to help like lower your down payment or something like that. But when you actually go to get the truck, you need to have that, you need to have that updated. Make sure actually subject to $500 deductibles. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So they want physical damage limit 75. Again, get exactly how much the truck is worth and have it emailed to you or straight to your agent and have them have the agent update that on your insurance and do this every time you return the truck and get a new one. Cause it, <laughs> make sure you pay attention to this. If you get, if you get a truck that's 60,000, you turn that one in the next truck is 90,000 and you haven't updated that and had gotten confirmation on it being updated. Well, you're on the hook for that 30 grand if something happens. And then also you have a $90,000 truck, then you go get a $60,000 truck. If that's not adjusted, you're, you're spending too much. You need to, you need to make sure your agent gets that done and you get confirmation on it that it's been lowered so you can save some money. Cause the main goal here is to get away from rentals. Like rentals helps you get started, but then you want to go buy a truck because like cost effectiveness, you're going to make weight. Like you, you can profit a lot more when you own your truck or at least like lease it or something because of the rental expense. The rental cost can be kind of high and uh, it can also cost you issues and, and take up a lot of time. That's one thing that like, yeah, it's easier to get started with rentals and uh, you know, you don't have to fork out all that money, but you, you got to go back and forth to rental location and depending on how far that is, that can be a bit of a time suck. Um, all right. Other one, I think this one, yeah, Ryder, they want a lot of the same stuff, million physical damage, additional insured, they want, uh, how much do they want on their physical damage? Does it say, I'm trying to see here, um, physical damage, 100,000 will be required for special approval. So that, I mean, basically they just want to make sure that the truck that you get is covered for whatever value you have on physical damage. All right. So there's that. Move these out of the way. Let's see here. All right, back to here. So next up, general liability. And actually, let me see see one of these. This is a COI. This will help explain this. A lot of people get this messed up. A one, two mil general liability policy. So that's one million each occurrence. Okay, one million per occurrence. All right. So this is a general liability. It's commercial commercial general liability policy, right? It's got a $1 million per occurrence limit. It's got some other components to this, but what really matters for Amazon Relay, is this $1 million for each occurrence, $2 million general aggregate. These are just pieces of the whole pie of general liability, okay? General aggregate is not a separate policy. <laughs> it's inside of your general liability policy. It's a piece, it's a component. So basically what that means is you can have, you can be sued up to a million dollars and be covered each time you get sued, <laughs> but you can only be sued for a million dollars and, and be paid out by the insurance company for that two times because that's two $1 million claims, all right? Or you could have 20 $100,000 claims, but Jesus, I, I hope you don't have that. Just, you probably wouldn't. I don't, 
I don't hardly ever come across general liability claims. I do come across a lot of auto liability claims and a lot of physical damage claims. And if you don't stay on top and get confirmation and like, seriously guys, get everything in email. When you need to update a, a truck with your insurance agent on your policy, email it to them. That way you have a paper trail and keep up with that. Um, <laughs> I've had people that, that either just never communicated it and went and got another truck, never told their agent and wrecked a truck and it puts them out of business or they have to pay. Like one guy paid like 87,000 out of pocket. He had a lot of trucks. He was renting a ton of them up in the Northeast. Um, but yeah, man, like, uh, <laughs> don't mess that up. Keep everything, keep records of everything. And, uh, just, you know, make sure you got an agent that's willing to work with you. Like this is, a this is a lot of, a lot of work for an agent. A lot of insurance agents are like old <laughs> and not very tech savvy. And, you know, not all of them, I'm not trying to bash on them or anything, but trucking in general is about the most labor intensive segment of insurance anybody could do. So if you got an insurance agent that doesn't specialize in trucking, you should probably get one and it's not easy to switch. So plan ahead. Uh, but yeah. All right. So that covers general liability. The only one that really cares about that is Amazon relay. You could have a broker that wants to see it for, you know, some specific, uh, shippers they work with. Uh, but it's kind of rare. And then next up workers comp, you'll see this on Amazon's uh, requirements over here, workers comp and employer liability. That's only if you've got W2, like actual employees, not 1099 contractors. Like 1099s are never employees. 1099s are always contractors. Employees always just get a W2. That's, that's just how that works. Um, so if you have employees, depending on how many you have and what state you're in, you might need workers compensation. Uh, employer liability, again, like you, you might need this where you're at, just talk with your agent if it's a requirement for your setup. But most of the time, like you're the driver, you're the owner. It's just you to start. You won't need these. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, the other things like you know, getting your DOT active and, and all that, that's pretty simple, but we were just talking, we're just talking about the insurance requirements. So I hope this helps. Hopes, hopefully it clears up a few things. Let me know in the comments if, uh, if there's anything else you're wondering about. I'll do some more videos. I've gotten some good responses so far. Like and subscribe, of course. Check out my referral links down below. They'll help you out with uh, freight factoring, fuel cards, all that good stuff, your ELDs. So thank you guys. Have a good one.